to How Did I Get This Far? Each episode will tackle the basic skills and knowledge that we all completely missed learning. Soon enough, you'll stop having to ask yourself, how did I get this far? On this episode, we talk about dating. What's better, meeting someone in real life or swiping right on dating apps? And when you do connect with a special someone, how do you know when it's time to say I love you? And why did that guy who asked me out ultimately just ghost me? Okay, okay, don't worry. We aren't bashing on dating here, just sharing valuable tips. All that and more right now. All right, welcome to another episode of How Did I Get This Far, where we break up with our old habits of avoiding growing up and start flirting with the idea of learning new things. Today's topic is dating. Since this is such a complicated topic, I've invited a special guest to help us DTR define the relationship with dating. My guest is Heather Hopkins. She is the founder and CEO of Goat Date, the secure video dating app that lets you go face-to-face first in order to avoid wasting time with endless messaging and the risk of being catfished. She's also the host and creator of the Hook Up with Heather Hopkins podcast, which tackles the confusing art of dating with crazy guests and awkward stories. Thanks for being here, Heather. Of course. What a mouthful. <laughs> I know. I was like, she's she's got something to say. But yeah, share your story of what led you to creating all of these outlets for discussing dating. Sure. So, I mean, I started with a podcast called Tea Talks, where I just would drink tea and have fun conversations with friends. And then it turned to, I brought my um, boy crazy roommate on. And so we started talking about dating and I was giving her all this advice. I was like, come on, get out there, girl, like make the move. And, and I was giving her advice. And then that's the episode that really people loved and, and were like, oh my gosh, do more, do more. So we started to just do a ton on dating. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to, we're just going to scrap this and do a whole show on dating. And so things kind of switched over and I was on all the apps, <laughs> keeping my stories fresh. And um, I was single for six years at the time. Basically, after after going on so many dating updates and so many bad ones, really, <laughs> um, I was like, you know what? I I'm, I was working five jobs at the time too, and I was like, I am not going to waste my time after chatting with these guys for forever, and then finally getting on the date, and within five minutes, going, oh no way! And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to Facetime them beforehand, and so I started to do that, and you could totally tell the whole vibe between you two right there. And I was like, you know what? There's no point of even. Like, I'm just going to make every, I'm going to do this with every single guy I ever talked to on a dating app. So I just started making that my prerequisite before ever meeting them. And I found um, it was so awesome because of the, the chemistry was totally there. But then the other side of it, then they would have my phone number. And if I wasn't interested in them, you know, those, uh, those guys who just keep going, hey, hey, hey. And I was like, oh no, now I have a new stalker. Um, and so And so I was like, you know, why isn't there an app out there that just goes right to that? Because I don't really have time to like sit there and text all these different guys. I just want to get right to being face to face, seeing if there's chemistry. And then if I, if we see that, then we can go meet and you know, it's worth my time chatting with you. But other than that, let's find that out first. And so that's what Goat Date's all about is we, we go right to being right after matching. Of course (laughs) you um, go right to being face to face first. It's a five minute date. There's conversation starters on the date. So we have the best video dating experience. And then after you have the option to chat, but then at that point you would know if it's uh, you know, if you have that connection there. Right. If it's worth, worth your time now to time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're kind of rewriting that process. I've always gotten very nervous about it because yeah. I'd rather be in person, but it, when you say it, it's like, why, why, what's the difference? Yeah. Like get over I, yourself. <laughs> I always knew when I started the company that it is like kind of a like scary thing. Like, oh my God, Heather, you mean like after matching, we're just going to go to being face to face. And I always say, first of all, it's not like, it's not like you match and like your camera turns on and all of a sudden you're on a date. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's like a match list. It's like a, it's almost like a protected phone. You're n- no number shared, but you click the button and it, and it calls them. Like they get like a phone call, a video date call and they answer. I know it's kind of a scary process, but I can tell you it is so much better than going on an awful date and spending the time and money and energy getting all ready, sitting in traffic and getting there and being like, oh heck no. Mm-hmm. It, it's something to get used to, but it's actually it's been, I've been so intentional about making it like a very comfortable and fun experience video dates. So we have like the conversation starters and it just, it honestly, like you'll get, you'll, you'll get that feeling of like giddiness when you're, when you're on go date. And it's, it's really amazing. Oh, that's awesome. For me, like I've gone on, uh, we matched on a dating app 
and we were supposed uh-huh. to go on a date to a place near him, which is a new pet peeve of mine when the guy chooses a place. Like, he's the one that asked me on a date, but he chooses right? a place that's, like, basically walking distance. <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, you asked me on a date. You're such a gentleman for choosing a place inconvenient to me. Great start. Yeah. And I was coming from work, and I work in TV production. So when I finish working, I don't actually know, oh, like, yeah. when that's going to be. Yeah. So we were kind of playing it by ear with me, and I had heard that we were going to get out, let's say, 7 o'clock. And ended up being more like 7.50. So I'm like rushing to the day. I'm like, hey, I'll get there at 8. But like, no, I wasn't. So I'm like rushing. I don't know. Any, if you know anything about LA, finding parking is its own oh, demon. Horrible. Horrible. Yes. So now I'm rushing to find parking. And then I find it. I cross the street. I'm running. And I literally physically crash into him at the bar. Oh. Luckily, he played it off while well. He was like, oh, you just fell into my arms already. And I was like, okay. Oh. Like, I just embarrassed myself. But Okay. So he buys me a beer and he gestures to these benches that face into the bar. And he said, oh, I like to sit here so I can people watch. And I was like, okay, like, it's kind of weird. You're supposed to be watching me. But I guess if there's a lull, we can talk about the people. Well, sure enough, there was absolutely a lull because this guy and I did not connect at all. He had said on the dating app, he noticed that I, I, you know, mentioned that I love comedy. And he's like, I love comedy, too. I'll definitely make you laugh on our first date. False. There wasn't one joke that came out of this man's mouth. He just had so many negative things to say, so many things about like money he hopes to have one day. And it that's, was bad. That's, that's, and I have a really fun, crazy thing that I learned while doing so much research on this. Um, so first of all, some people are like really good over text and horrible in person or the opposite. <laughs> um, but that's the beauty of, I mean, personally, I'm really bad over text, but I'm like, I think I'm pretty fine in person, but over text, I'm like, okay. And people are like, are you mad? I'm like, no, I just said, okay. And so, so I sometimes get mis, um, misunderstood over text. So I think that's, what's beautiful about ghost data is like, there's no games and any of that. There's no like, oh my God, what do I say? It's all like really just how you are in person. Yeah. The absolutely. thing that I learned while researching was that there is a whole entire career field for people who will actually do your communications with you on dating apps. So I met this group of guys and they go, oh yeah, we have a girl that runs all our dating apps. I'm like, what do you mean? They're all roommates. They all are at the same house. They go, yeah, we hire her and she guarantees a date every single Friday night. She runs all the conversations so we don't have to waste the time. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, all of us use her. I'm like, what? And I'm like, did that happen to me? Because I had the same thing where this guy was like, so funny. So like, like suave, charming. Yeah, this guy's like totally mm-hmm. got my humor. And then we get on a date. I mean, I could not have gone on a date with a more, like, talk, I, could, I basically talked to a wall. Like there was nothing <laughs> at all coming from him. And so I'm like, did I get, did I have that situation happen where he's that actually is crazy? Uh, I know. I think that's in a way catfishing, but like instead of it's with your face, fishing. it's with it's personality fishing. And and um, oh yeah, so they were telling me the whole process. And I guess at, before the date, the girl who they hired basically gave them a summary of the things they talked about. So like little boys. This sounds like a movie. Oh, I'm not, I, I feel like it could be. <laughs> yeah. Think. Well, the punchline of my date that potentially might have used this woman's services, but <laughs> obviously there was the lull that I anticipated. <laughs> so I just start looking at the people. It was a casual Tuesday evening. So nothing weird was happening. No, no quality people watching was occurring. I decided to say, I was like, oh, well, so much for that people watching, you know, everyone here looks pretty normal. And he goes, well, you're pretty interesting. And I was like, like, in a good way or a weird way? And he goes in a weird way. Oh, my gosh, horrible. I'm one of my favorites. No, (laughs) it's okay. I mean, you know what, all I'm expecting is a good story to tell my friends. Exactly. And I, and I always tell people go into the date, worst case, you make a new friend or you have a great story. Those are yeah. the, those are, if, the, if it doesn't work out romantically, those are the two other options. So you know what? Just go. go on date. <laughs> yes, girl. I know you've interacted with a lot of different people who have dated in and met people in every way. What have you discovered is most successful meeting in real life or meeting through a dating app? So I think there used to be this like stigma with online dating. It was like, oh my, like you had to go on a dating app to find someone, but I think it's wearing off. And I always like to tell people like walk into a coffee shop, what is everyone doing? And they're on technology. So it's really not shocking that you don't meet people like you used to back in the day. You don't meet people like, oh, we just bumped each other at the grocery store. Oh my God. Hi. That doesn't happen. The dream. So yeah. So what I, what I was really important to me with GoDate 
was to bring together how people used to meet and then using technology. So I think what, what online dating has been missing is that actual human connection part. And that's what GoDate's all about. And, and that's my really my, my biggest mission and, and love for what I'm doing is that I am bringing people back to actually truly connecting face to face, but through technology. Um, so I, so as far as like picking either side, I think we're kind of that in between, which I think is just the perfect medium. The world's changed since back in the day. There is technology and that's what everyone's on. So how can we bring the two together? That is a really good point. And based on my experience, my track record between meeting a person in real life and meeting on a dating app, the outcome is the same. I'm in my peak of singlehood. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but if we do want to try all of our options, including meeting in real life, what are some good places where you might meet somebody or things you could do where you might meet someone? See, this is a hard question because I believe it's really not about where, it's about who you are. Ooh. Way to take that question somewhere I'll else. Get there. <laughs> you can be this really unhappy person and you could be in like the the mecca of singles and I think you're not going to meet the person. That's that's what it is. So if you're happy inside and you're doing things you love and you're lit up inside, you're going to attract that person no matter if it's um, walking on the sidewalk. It, it could come when you least expect it, but it's all about, it starts at you. Actually, that brings me into a fun little activity that I'm going to call True or False Clichés About Dating Edition. We'll see how this takes off because you actually just said one of them. So I'm going to tell you a cliche about dating that we've all heard. And then based on your knowledge, if you would say they are true or false, the first one that I think we've all heard over and over, true or false, it'll happen when you least expect it, or you'll find someone when you stop looking. True. Um, But also you need to be putting yourself out there because you can be whole as whole as can be and you sit in your house and you're not going to meet the person so you have to still be putting yourself out there this is amazing because you just said the next one true or false you've got to put yourself out there <laughs> yes absolutely put yourself out there and like i said always go on the date you either are going to have a romantic connection make a friend or have a great story i try to think it'll happen when i least expect it because i'm one of those hopeless romantics just hoping that we bump yeah. into each other at a coffee shop right. which did actually happen to me once but here's my problem. Because I'm supposed to... At least, I already, I already know what you're going to say. As yeah. soon as my foot steps outside, I think I'm going to meet him. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm ready. So when I was at a coffee shop, this, this, I was reading an article, and this, I hear this voice say, um, hey, what are you reading? I'm like, what doofus is interrupting me? And I look up, and it's a beautiful man. And I'm like, this is my moment. This, I'm in my own movie now. We're about to fall in love. And he got my number, but we never went on the date. So I totally felt the same way. Um, I actually met my boyfriend, ironically, in the middle of creating my own dating app solution for myself. Amazing. Um, but anyways, I, I remember feeling the same thing of like, oh, it's going to happen when I least expect it. Am I least expecting it right now? Mm-hmm. Like, what are this? Should I go out with my friends? Could he like show up? Oh my God. <laughs> you know? As soon as my mind's thinking about it, I'm like, no, Amanda. But then I'm like, well, because I'm thinking about it when I'm not supposed to think about it, is that when I'm going to meet? I, I know. It's so complicated. I don't know. I mean, I met my boyfriend, of course, while I was creating something for myself. So I was so focused on creating the solution that I honestly wasn't expecting. <laughs> and then, of course, that's when I met him. Totally. So it really is all of them because everyone's story is different. From my experience, it's true. But put yourself out there. Be Do, your, do you... The right person will walk in when it's right. <laughs> I should add that one in here. Just do you, yeah. which I think is, is do you. that's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll do another one. When you find the one you just know. I think so. Ooh. Do you feel like you found the one? I do. Um, uh... I, I think there's like an element of peace when you're with the right person. It's like this unexplainable, like, I know I can be my whole self. If there's a bunch of like noise and fuzz around it, it's probably not right. I love that. I guess that kind of goes along with your partner should be your best friend. Yes. (laughs) I remember my last boyfriend, I called him my best friend. And he's like, I'm not your best friend. I'm your boyfriend. I'm like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-oh. No, 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 no. (laughs) Yeah, no. You should play hard to get. No. Even like the whole concept of like, if someone texts you, do I have to like wait a couple minutes to respond? I'm like, are you kidding me? You're right. Respond. (laughs) So I am like a very anti-games person. And um, that's why, that's why I created GoTape very intentionally to cut out all those things. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when it comes to texting? You know, everyone's different about texting, but sometimes you match with somebody or meet somebody who sucks at texting 
And sometimes, and there are people in serious relationships that have problems with someone being bad at texting, but especially with dating, you don't know what that means. Is it they genuinely are too busy or are they too busy for you? What are your thoughts? Ooh, I think, I think you have to ask what their preferred uh, form of communication is because that's required in every relationship. So I personally am a caller. I'm really, I'm honestly, genuinely really bad at texting. I'm doing stuff all day. I prefer calling. So I think if you have that discussion with your partner and say like, what, what do you, what works best for you? Is it calling? Is it texting? And depending on what they say, let's say you are calling them and they're not answering, then you, then you have something to talk about. Like, how can we be better at this? That's good. That's a, a great idea. I should have tried that with the uh, guy that stopped texting. <laughs> um, I had a very wise friend tell me, she said, Heather, if they show you who they are, believe them. And if this guy showed you that he's a guy who does not respond, is, you know, is like not putting that full effort in that you are, believe them that they're not going to do that. They're not going to yeah. all of a sudden switch. That's how they feel about you. And that's how they feel about the relationship. Yeah. Very fitting. I, had a, I, I just had a podcast come out and we were talking about cheating. I had a really awesome guest and she goes, you know, I realized like, I'm not a cheater and I'm actually a really good person. And I know there's other people like me. Like, why am I, why do I keep putting up with this, with this crap? <laughs> there's someone out there that is not going to do this to me. So I think like for you realizing like, I'm a person who communicates, puts the effort in. And I know there's other people out there like me. And if you're not that, then you're not right for me. That was so beautifully said. I think that's perfect. Obviously, a lot of people say you have to look for someone with the same values as you. And I think for me, communication, like that was my major. So like, obviously, I value communication. And that's what you know from now on, like, I'm this and I deserve this. Yes. Girl, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's say the relationship's going um, well. Mm -hmm. What are ways to express interest that you liked the first date? I think it's never good to play games ever. So don't ever be like, I have to wait three days to text him. If you're like feeling so happy and giddy after the date, do you, you know, text him be like, oh my God, like I'm sitting in bed smiling. That was so fun. Like who cares? You know, that's, that's you. That's, that's the beauty of you. And if he can't accept that, or if he thinks that's like crazy or something after a date, then like, don't even waste your time on this. Per that will, that will show exactly what you need to know about this person. They don't accept you for you. I think a, a good follow-up question to this is, you know, on a first date, you want to put your best foot forward is a common phrase, but at the same time, you want to be yourself. What's a way to balance the two because obviously our real selves are probably way more strange than a new person should see but should they just see it because if they're the one then all about, love it. like letting your freak flag fly you know like <laughs> I'm a weirdo and there is no hiding that and obviously don't just go sit there and like cry and tell them <laughs> your whole like you know be like be cool but but at the same time like don't don't be like is this weird if I like just be you that's who they're going to be with from then on. So like, why put up this false sense of you and then try to have to like um, defend it as your relationship goes on? Like, there's no point. Be you from the beginning. And then there's, it's going to make it just seamless as it goes. Yeah, that's great. So be yourself. Do you. I think do you. That's the quote. Do you. Right there. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's say it's continuing to go well. Mm -hmm. How do you know when it's time to have that talk of, defining the relationship or how to have that talk when you feel it's right do it if you think it's after three dates do it this is where people fail to realize like almost always feelings are mutual almost always if it's right it's usually understood that it's right on both sides and if it's not there's going to be like this confusion or like are they into me or not so if you're like giddy and you're so you've been going on dates and you're like oh my god like this is amazing I'm totally like I feel like this person is someone that I see myself with long term and and he's you know he's giving the same effort back he's doing all these things and you're like and you feel ready if like that's always if you feel ready like don't just like we've been on three dates we need to be in a relationship no like it's all based on like if that's what you you're feeling you want or whatever it is then go ahead and bring that up and be like hey this is really important to me and I usually almost always if the feelings are mutual then it's not going to be a hard conversation. It's going to be a very easy conversation. That's a really great point that it would feel mutual on both ends. Yeah. But another good thing that you had mentioned is if you think it should be three on three dates, do it after three dates. And some people feel like it needs to be months. And I right. think it's a good point that your timeline is your own. There's so much pressure for a particular timeline. Through all that. <laughs> yeah. So I think that brings up another question that I um, 
felt like sounds really personal, but I'm just going to say it. Oh, what great. to say to your family when they always mention that you're still single in case you forgot. What's a good way to handle that? I'm doing me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Duh. I mean, like, God, to, to imagine just because your parent, like, no, no, I'm doing me. I'm the timing will be right when I'm ready. Um, what other factors do you think either like your dates or your relationship, what else should people keep an eye out for? You know, there's certain, there are certain deal breakers. Like I dated a guy and I am, I'm Christian and I want to be with someone who is Christian as well. Um, you know, that's not everyone, like not everyone's that way, but that's how I am. And so as much as this person was great, we didn't mesh in that area. And so I found that it actually affected other places. And as much as I'm like, wow, do I really like, am I going to break up with this guy just because he doesn't have this one thing? But I was like, no, but that thing's really important to me. Like, that's what I want in something long term. So I'm not going to spend all this time on this person when they have this thing that is actually not a long term thing that's going to work for me. And you have to know like your things that are deal breakers. You can't just waste your life away just on the comfort of being with this person. You have to like make that grown up decision and say like, you know what, this person is not long term and that's, I want something long term and they're not going to be for that. So I'm, I have to step away. That's very mature. Yeah. It's very, it's a very, you have to make a very mature decision, but it, it's, it's worth it. It's just very hard. Yeah. So since you sound very mature when it comes to breakups or rejection, obviously not everyone's very good at it since ghosting is so common and other forms of immature breaking up. What, what do you think is a good way to break up with someone? Wow. Um, I think it's so (laughs) person to person. Um, I, gosh, I mean, I'm always big on being really transparent. Um, I think never just, I, I talk about this a lot. I have episodes on this in my podcast where we just talk about breakups. There's so much to talk about. Um, but the whole, the whole thing of like saying to someone, um, oh, we're, I, I just like, we can't do any, I'm just really busy. And that, if that's not the reason, then don't say that. Like if you're just not into them and you're like, but, and then they see on Instagram that like the next week you actually have just met the love of your life. And all of a sudden you're not busy. Like, no, just feel like, you know what? I just don't feel it. And I think like, of course they're going to, they could be defensive. They could hit you with, you know, an argument over it. Just know that it's never wrong to be honest ever. So if you, if you say it in a polite way, but that's honest, you can never argue with that. If that's how you feel, you can't argue with that. So always be honest. Don't ever say like, Oh, it's not you. It's me. Or, you know, any of those BS excuses, take those away and just always be transparent. And that's the best way to to end things with anyone. That's a really good point. Of course, like if a, if a guy says to you and you're really into him, okay, you have to think about it always from the other perspective too. Like if you're really into him and he goes, I keep having these, um, these late nights at the office and I just don't have the time. So you're going to sit there and go, oh, well, okay. So why don't we make it more of a point to go on weekends? So you're going to reply, oh, like, that's okay. I totally understand. I can get used to that. And, you know, I have a lot of stuff then too. Maybe let's just make it more of a point to see each other on weekends. And all of a sudden now he's wrote back in, but actually he's meaning that he just doesn't connect with you. And he's also really busy. So you always have to like say, but like the root of it versus just like the, the cover up for it. If that makes mm, sense. That does. Like get to the root of it. Be honest about what that is. And that will fare better <laughs> as far as breakups go. Perfect. All right, some other questions that I have. Once uh, once it's time to have a real first date in person, what are some good suggestions of where to go on dates, like things yeah. to talk about? What do you think? So I named my app, it's called Goat Date, like greatest of all time date. So what what it was kind of actually inspired by was my, my mom grew up in Oklahoma and they used to always go on these things called Coke dates. Where, Please explain. Um, not what you're <laughs> thinking. Um, they would basically grab a Coca-Cola together. And that was kind of like that date before they committed to something bigger to first see if they like like each other. And so I love that whole concept. And obviously back then they didn't have, you know, they didn't have FaceTime. They didn't have those, those mechanisms to be able to, you know, see each other through the phone, make it easier. So I was like, I really want to rewrite that, but for online dating, and that's what Goat Date came from, is like, before we commit to like chatting or going on on a date together, let's first like have our Goat Date to see if we hit it off and we have chemistry, we know we we have that, we can go on a date. 
we kind of on goat date we have kind of a built-in coffee date or coke date <laughs> um that was the whole inspiration so you know on other apps you kind of just chat and then you meet up you could meet at dinner or whatever it is there's that awkward moment where you're both like uh hey <laughs> yes but on Go Date, the amazing part is that you don't have that. It's almost like you have this like connection, like you know who each other are. You already have a conversation going that's actually face to face. So when you when you actually meet, it can kind of be wherever you both have established that you have interest, and in. it's like you know you've you've already done that part. So if you want to go to dinner, go to dinner. If you want to go catch a movie, catch a movie. If you want to go, it's a little different on first dates when you meet off Go Date. Yeah. Once you decide you're going to go on a date with someone, there must have been something in common that made you both interested in meeting. So that would be a right. good starter. Right. But yeah. I think on, on other apps, you know, go to coffee or something that's non-committal first because you don't know what you're going to get. Yes. <laughs> I am very team first date being a coffee date yes. um, over drinks. There's just less pressure on in all aspects, but especially with your time. Mm -hmm. When I started Go Date, I had done so much research, like I told you. And one of the things that was so sad to me was I was talking to so many different guys and they were saying to me, I'm spending $150 on dinner per date. And they're like, I'm going on, I'm putting myself out there. I'm going on multiple a month. And I find out right away that I'm either not into them or they're like totally there for the free dinner. And they just like, they just totally bail on me afterwards. And that's what was like. I'm like, I have to create Goat Date. Like, I need to help them. <laughs> I don't want that happening to people. It's just so sad. Yes. I like the idea of Coke dates where it, like, it could be any simple thing that you guys can do together. Um, especially I like dates that have an activity involved with them too, like mini golf or something. It, it doesn't cost a lot of money. That costs like $7, but it means so much more than grabbing three, four drinks. I totally. think it's such a better idea. Yeah. But what are some other obviously not rules, but guidelines when it comes to dating, anything else that we should avoid or we should encourage or we should keep in mind? I look at hundreds and thousands of dating app profiles a day. I see so many. And the biggest thing, and I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give all your listeners and you the best tips. I watch the people who take these tips and I watch their matches go up like crazy. So the biggest thing I see is people posting um, all selfies People okay. posting, that's, that's, we'll go into that later. Um, people <laughs> posting like blurry photos or like photos, like you're just like, wait, what? But I, I have these six photos that you can put in your file and that will, I've watched it make matches go up like crazy. And I've had people who are like, oh my gosh, Heather, I took your tips. I never made like any matches before on dating apps, but now all of a sudden I'm making all these matches and oh my God, I'm going on all these go dates. I'm like, yes. Um, so what they are is the first photo, always, always, this is the first thing people see, make sure that it looks welcoming and friendly and it's a picture of your face. That's the first impression that people make. And if it's a grumpy photo, why would anyone want to talk to someone who is like, like, mm. <laughs> no, you know, you don't, that doesn't, it has to like speak to you first. Um, the second thing is a full body shot. We want to know what you look like if you're right in front of us. So if all your pictures are like you, like in just above, like, it's just like, wait, what are you hiding? So always like, you want to be fully transparent and like, this is me if I was right in front of you. Here's what I look like. Then um, the next thing is a photo of you and your element. So it could be that you love hiking or you love scuba diving or whatever it is. That photo is going to give you lots to talk about. The next one is a photo with the special people around you. So I always say the quote, you are who you surround yourself with. It gives them a little glimpse of who you are as a person. And then the last one, always show a photo with your caring side, because that's the person that is going to, you know, maybe one day love and care about you. And so I always say in this spot, if you have a dog or, or a pet, put that, <laughs> put a picture with them because that always, that, I mean, that could get the girl alone. Um, so the person that I'm about to go date with, I want to be able to see that the person in those photos. And then when I actually talk to them on a go date, that it's totally accurate, all their photos and, and who I actually talk to, that's totally an accurate portrayal. of. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. What was going to be your comment about selfies? Oh my God. I just see people and I'm just like, how does that show the color to you and the depth to your life? Like if, you know, we've already seen your face. Why do we need six of your face? <laughs> like, but photos should only like be more of a, a, like a little snapshot of who you are. Um, so I think by taking those tips, that's what that does. It kind of shows the different dimension and, and colors of your life versus just the one dimensional picture of my face with like one with a dog filter, oh. one with a, 
It's so bad. The worst, just the worst. It is. <laughs> um, are there any other tips that you have for basics on dating and how to kind of get yourself out there? Listen, I am totally a go for it kind of girl. I always say risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> like if you're dying inside to like, just see if this person is into you or not, ask them on the date. And if they say no, guess what? Your life is the exact same. Like nothing's changed. And if they say yes, who knows what could happen? Even if it doesn't go well, it's all about how you handle it afterwards. Even if they're awkward, it, it's your job to just always be the bigger person and walk into, Hey, how's it going? Don't, don't let anything like, you know, change you just because they said no. It's okay. I Life goes on. love that. I've had that mindset as well. And anytime that I say that to people, they're always like, well, you're just really outgoing, Amanda. Like, I can't do that. So for me, if I see a cute guy at the bar, I'll go up to him. I'll start talking to him. Usually it results in absolutely nothing, but at least I tried. And like, that's it. Like, all I did was get rejected, but like, don't we all get rejected? It's not a big deal. We're going to move on. I'm going to get myself a drink. <laughs> exactly. And, and like, that's, that's why I always tell people like, okay, so if he says no, what's going to happen? And they're like, oh, they're like, tell me this. I'm like, Guess what? Has your life changed at all from any of that? And they're like, no. And I'm like, Hey, so go do it. Risk it for the biscuit, baby. <laughs> and you start saying that phrase more. It definitely oh, lifts yeah. me up. Yeah. <laughs> if people want to hear more from stories in your podcast or connect with you, or I guess ask you for advice on their photos, yeah. um, <laughs> what are some ways people can connect with you? Um, so I have tons of different like every topic that we talked about, basically, I have a whole episodes dedicated to those topics on the hookup with Heather Hopkins. Or um, if you listen to this episode and you're like, oh my God, that's totally me. I hate all the games. I'm totally all about just like meeting face to face first. Go on Goat Date. We have all five star reviews. We have so many incredible users. I personally try to go date with anyone who will match with me. And I, and I really try to, you know, go face to face with these people, talk, see who who is on go date and there is some incredible people and really it's, it's a five minute date. Give people just like me and Amanda talked about just like being open and putting yourself out there. It is five minutes. So this is a place where you can take chances. Like see if, see if you were just being your weird self, like see how that's taken. And I promise like, it's just so much better. It's it's, you'll have a really hard time ever going back to just chatting with someone um, it's just such an amazing place where your, your heart and personality are truly at the root of it and they shine and it's, it's, it's incredible. I, 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 I just rave about it because I, I know as a single, if I was single, I mean, I'm, I'm not single. I talk to these users and I'm like, I cannot wait for you to like, I can't wait to hear what these girls, like just how giddy they are after they talk to you. Like, it's just such a, such a different app that just makes you feel fulfilled afterwards versus like, Oh, well, we'll see if that guy responds or, you know, all that, all that kind of like negative feelings. It, it really takes a lot of that away and like actually focuses on connection. So it's really beautiful. That's fantastic. Well, hopefully we get some more amazing people on your app after hearing this. Because <laughs> Obviously, everyone that's listening to this is an amazing, wonderful person. I, I bet. I'm no, no question about that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. And to all of the listeners, obviously, if you really love it, if you're falling in love with this podcast, please subscribe, leave reviews, share the episodes, and we will talk to you all again soon. If there is a basic task or aspect of life that you cannot grasp, or if you want to learn more about this topic, email howdidigetthisfar at gmail.com and tag at howdidigetthisfarpod on Instagram with your helpful hacks. Finally, please give the podcast a rating and review so the show can continue tackling more struggles. But that's as far as we will get for now. I'm Amanda Ogan. Thanks for listening.